Hello and welcome back to Grim Survival. I am sitting on the floor in the storage room and I'm going to be doing some camera work today. This is going to be an interesting thing. I am attempting to build my own Berkey water filter using two five gallon food grade buckets and some filters that are not the Berkey brand, but these are ceramic water filters. They are very similar to the Berkey filters and they work in a similar manner so i'm going to see how well this works for me and yeah hopefully i get this built today hopefully i have all the right tools i can tell you that one issue i've already come across is my spigot this is my spigot and this is the largest drill bit i have obviously that's not going to be big enough so i'm going to try to improvise and make it work and i'm going to try to bring you with and show you everything i'm doing here so um yeah obviously the camera work is going to be a little off with this because <laughs> i am not a cameraman and i'm doing this all by myself so yeah this is going to be fun i guess first i'll show you everything i got here to work with um and just go over a couple of the prices. Now, this kit for the spigot came from the same place I got the filters, which is all of this stuff. Came with the rubber washers and everything I needed and all that stuff. Um, so just to go over the price of everything I'm working here, and I'll let you do the math on it because I'm just going to tell you the price of everything individually, is for two of these water filters, it was 60 I believe $60, which is cheaper than the Berkey filters. The Berkey filters are a lot more than $60. And yeah, that's interesting. Now, how this works is questionable, in my personal opinion, because I really don't know. I thought these things were supposed to have a hole in the bottom of them, too. So I'm going to have to read how this actually works. Ah. Okay, so how these particular filters work is the water goes in and then seeps out through the ceramic filter. So that's a an interesting type of filter that it, it works. Now, these filters are um, not, I don't think these are the fluoride actual filters, but testing the water because um, in the housing edition I live in, we actually have well water. Yeah, for the whole community. So... Um, that's interesting. But um, what it says it filters out, stage one, outer shell, microfiltration, bacteria, cysts and particles, antibacterial form formulation contains silver, inhibit microbiology growth with the ceramic, um, granular activated carbon takes out the chlorine and organics to improve taste and odor. So that's an interesting filter. And it's kind of dirty um it does say you have to pre-treat the filter so i'm actually going to put you know i have an extra bucket i hadn't put my rice in it yet so i'm going to uh take one of these buckets and put some just the tap water in there and let them soak like the instructions are telling me to do but like i said those particular filters are 60 dollars for two of them i believe the, the actual berkey filters are over a hundred dollars i paid 20 for this kit so that's 80 dollars right there and then if you count the two buckets and the gamma seal lid that i intend to use you're looking just under a hundred dollars to build one of these water filter systems so like i said i don't i don't have a drill bit that's large enough to make the hole like i need so I'm going to improvise the wall. So first things first, I have to make the hole for the spigot and get that thing in there because that's going to be probably the most difficult part of this build in actuality because I don't have a bigger drill bit. I probably do have a bigger drill bit, but it's probably somewhere I don't feel like digging it out. So like I said, this is plastic. So it's not going to be that hard to improvise. Um, I do have a milling bit, actually, that I might make the hole the right size. But what I'm going to do, this is one of the screw-on, or you can use it as a screw-on, 
Um, I'm not going to bother because it has rubber washers and it has a, a nut. It, and yeah, it shouldn't leak. Even if it does, it might seep out a little bit. I mean, if it does, I'll place a towel underneath of it where I plan to put it. Now, I did not rinse out this bucket prior to doing this because I'm going to make a mess drilling this hole. So I will rinse it out after the fact. So first things first is you want, you know, from what I understand, you want the spigot to be just a little higher, so there's about that much in the bottom. That case, in case any sediment or debris gets into the water bucket itself, it's going to sink down below the tap, and that way you can clean it out and things like that. And you can always take everything off of here. It's not that hard to take it apart and dump it that way and use it that way for cleaning. But what I'm going to do is mark the hole with a sharpie. Hopefully, I can hold this still enough the way I'm doing this. That way I make the hole the right size. Um, yeah, maybe I should have held it a little, little differently. And believe me, I have never done this before and I'm taking you through the whole process because this is going to be a learning experience for us both or all of us, whoever watches. So yeah, first things first, let's destroy a bucket. Can you see that? Good. See how easy that was? So yeah, there's the first hole. It's obviously not big enough. So like I said, I'm going to improvise. I'm actually going to grab that milling bit. So uh, I'll be back. All right, this is a milling bit that I got from a Polymer 80 lower kit for assembling a lower receiver so what this is for was the milling so it's for cutting out um, polymer is what it was used for and it fits in here so what i'm hoping it's going to allow me to do is actually cut out the hole using this so this is going to be an interesting experiment Bear with me. That's working really well. I am going to move it closer. Maybe. And hopefully you can see how well that's working. I think I went too low. That's not good. I did go too low, but that's okay. I will it's wanting to drop, so I want to do it like this now. This would have been easier with the drill press. If you have a drill press, highly recommend. All right, it's still a pretty snug hole. Uh, if you can see it all the way around, it's not really that bad, not even on the bottom where I thought I did it. The thing is still on there perfectly. So, yeah, I will be able to get the washer on there and install this thing. But first, I'm going to take it and rinse it out. So... Bear with me. I have rinsed it with just tap water, and yeah, I didn't bother to dry it out. Now, the kit that this comes with has the, the little scratchy pad there for cleaning the bucket. It has rubber grommets or washers. It has thicker rubber washers and wing nuts. Um, it also has a couple of these stopper plugs, I assume, to uh, stop up the hole for some odd reason. Um, but I'm not using those, obviously, because I don't even know what they're for. But it, it came with all of this stuff, like I said, plastic nuts. And, and this is a plastic one. All of this is plastic. So keep that in mind also if you're going to use it. Now, obviously, that's probably going to go hopefully like that. Now, if this does seep a little bit or leak a little around the hole, what I'm going to end up doing is taking some silicone or rubber cement and putting it on there and then putting this back on. I'm not sure if I'll have to do that. I will let you know in an update if I do, because 
I'm really not sure. So we'll see. So I don't know. I'm thinking the flat one should probably be on there first, but that doesn't seem to fit that hole. I actually think these are extra for the water filter itself. I think these little ones are the only ones that actually fit on here. So that's probably how that works. And yeah, the wing nuts also are too small. So the wing nuts and the, the black washers are an extra for the filters themselves, which is good because I tend to lose and break things. I am a destructive type of individual. So the only thing you're putting on here is this rubber washer. You'll have another one on the inside and then this plastic nut, which I will tighten down with a wrench when I go and grab the wrench because I forgot to bring it in. Or a, a, yeah, either a wrench or a pair of pliers would probably work also. So yeah. Um, yeah, that's basically how I think it goes. And obviously it's not going to work too well like that. So I will definitely have to tighten it down until the, you, you really want to tighten it down until the washer goes flat from plumbing experience. I would say that's the way it's supposed to go. So yeah, I do have some plumbing experience and I'll show you, you see, there is about an inch. Hopefully you can see that there is about an inch there between the uh, the bottom and where this thing has been screwed in half. And I'm just currently, hopefully you can see what I'm doing here, currently putting the washer on. It's a little difficult to do when you can't see what you're doing. There we go. Doing it by feel. There is, feels like there is, might be a little bit of, I don't know, it's just where I nicked it with the drill bit. It's fine. So that being like that. And let's see if I can screw this thing on. Thinking I might have to do this. Well, I probably should have put the hole a little bit bigger. It is, it is touching the bottom. The, the nut itself is touching the bottom. The spout or the, you know, the, the interior part of the spout isn't touching the bottom. The nut kind of is. I will have to definitely go get a wrench would be the easiest way to do this. One that fits. I have an adjustable wrench that I can make fit. And snug it down as tightly as possible to prevent any leaks. So I am going to grab that. Be right back. All right. I grabbed an adjustable wrench. A little bit of a tight space to work with. And that is a rather large nut to try to put on there. So I'm actually thinking the channel locks are going to be easier for me to get a grip on it and get it twisting. So... Channel locks. It's such a very tight spot and all my tools are so big. <laughs> I do have a smaller pair of of adjustable wrench here. But yeah, it's too small, won't fit. Put some vice grips on it here in a minute. That might actually be easier. Now we're trying vice grips. I mean, like I said, I've never done this before. This is trial and error. And that is a rather big plastic nut in there, if you can see the thing. Probably not, but it's huge. And I cannot find anything to get a good grip on it, to get it tightening. So, yeah, my biggest problem I'm having is the angle of the bucket. That is turning it ever so slowly. Never going to be able to tighten it up enough like that, though. That's just not going to happen. And I don't believe I have wrenches. I have a lot of sockets, but sockets just aren't going to do the job. So what I'm going to try to do now is hold the, the nut with the pliers or the channel locks like so. And then I'm going to tighten it by twisting this. See, I'm twisting the outside to give me leverage. And that is working 
thousand million, hundred thousand million times better. Yeah, that's not a, I don't know if that's a real number, but whatever. So I'm going to have to back it off just slightly. Just so I can make the spout straight up and down. Now you can see the washer has been pushed flat. So that should be a really good seal on both sides. Should be. I mean, I will test it with uh, just by rinsing it out again and, and seeing if it's holding water. But I will do that here in just a little bit. Next. Here we go. All right, now that's installed. And I have went through every single tool I have trying to figure out the best way to do it. I have plastic from drilling it out all over the floor. That's awesome. It's on there. So next, we're going to have to put a lid on here and drill holes so this goes up through the lid and into the bucket. So I'm going to literally have to drill more holes in this one and holes in a lid and holes in this bucket. So this is the bucket I'm going to use for the top. This has a gun to seal lid on it. So I'll be able to do that and take that off, obviously. Now, the reason I'm going with the Gamma Seal lid is just because, well, it's not on every well, I have a rubber mallet, but I may have to go get the rubber mallet. Yeah, I will have to. Well, let's just see if I can try not to damage it. I can see this video is going to have a lot of editing. Can you see what I'm banging on down here? Sorry for the light. It's very bright in here because of, uh, yeah, there we go. Because of the changing light out the window that I left open. But what I'm doing is I'm hitting it with the wood so that I don't damage the plastic. And there we go. Gamma seal lid ring is on. There's a rubber washer up in there to keep it from leaking. And then you can just screw this lid on there. And this is going to be a lot better because we have cats to keep debris out of it. Now, one thing to note is you're going to have to have an air hole in here so that it gets the air in so the water gets pushed down through the filter by way of gravity. That requires air intake. So what I'm going to end up doing is drilling another hole here and probably putting a piece of screen over it with some uh, uh, glue. So, yeah. So, this is going to be the top. The bucket with the spigot is going to be the bottom, which is over here. I have too many buckets around me. I have, well, yeah, extra buckets. These have to soak, but I'm going to go ahead and get the holes drilled, and then I'm going to go soak them in probably this bucket. Probably do one of these buckets. I'll soak it in there. But, yeah, next thing is more drilling. Drilling is fun. I probably could have got the spigot cheaper. Like I said, I paid $20 for the kit. I probably bought the wrong one because it's a replacement kit. It has all these extra washers and all these extra uh, rubber grommets or rubber stoppers there for, um, for the filters as well. So I do need to line up holes. Now, the easiest way to do this is just to drill through everything. So, I have to drill through the bottom of this and into the top of that. And this is a food grade lid to go with my food grade bucket. So, the easiest way I think it's going to be to do this is like so. And then just line it up on the top. Hope it stays there and drill through it. It does lock into the lid fairly well because of the lid. Um, because there's a little lip there. So that's really going to make it easier to hold it still. Because, yeah, these lids are just cheap old plastic. But they are food grade plastic according to what it says. There's a sticker on top of here I'm trying to remove. Because I don't want to accidentally get that lined up and drill through that. And then have to deal with that later. Because that would just be a pain. you got to peel stickers off slowly. Or they, you know, don't come off correctly. 
All right, now for more drilling, the fun part. Obviously, I don't need the milling bit anymore. Not for that particular thing. Now, if I could find where I put the cover for that milling bit, that would be nice, but I don't see it right up hand. I'll find it in a little bit. I just really want, I mean, obviously that's a big enough stopper, but I really just need something to line up with the hole because the snug, the more tight it is, the better it's going to be, the easier it's going to, you know, prevent leakage. And this is really the part where you don't want any leakage because if you have stuff seeping around, you're going to get all that stuff that you don't want in your water back in your water. So this is the most important part for keeping a seal. That seal for that uh, spout down there is easily, you know, like I said, some silicone rubber cement around it. It won't leak anymore if it ever does. So basically, it looks like the original drill bit I was using, which I believe is a, that's not even the original drill bit I was using. That's a drill bit from that polymer 80 kit, I think. Maybe not. Well, yeah, this is a 3 8 drill bit, I believe. I believe, don't quote me on that, but I think so, because all my drill bits are all... This is what happens when your wife uses your tools. But they're, they're not quite in order anymore. But it looks to me like it's going to work. So I'll see if I can show you this. And let's get to drilling some holes. All right, now we're working standing up. So like I said, that's the lid that's going to be on the bottom portion. This is going to be the top bucket, which obviously the outside of it needs cleaned off a little bit. And yeah, it locks in really well into that. So I think it's going to hold it pretty stable, which is a good thing because, yeah, I'm about to drill holes through them. And like I said, the easiest way to do it is to put them together and then drill your holes. Like I said, I believe this is a 3 8 drill bit, so that should be pretty if sufficient. You can see here the size. They look like they match pretty well. So, yeah, that's how that's going to work. All right, so this is the part. If you mess up, you got to get a new bucket, so let's not mess up. Hopefully my drill fits in here. So I, you do need to keep them, you know, spaced enough apart where you have the the filters, you know. Basically, there's a center ring down in the bottom of this bucket. If you can see it, there's a little center ring there. If you just put your drill, well, my drill, as far in as it goes like that, make sure there's plenty of room, and then do it on the opposite side because of the size of my drill. I'm just going to keep basically the battery of the drill pushed up against one side and go straight down. Um, I'm going to try to make sure I'm lined up good. I like things to be even. And here goes. That's that. Now don't move the bucket and do the exact same thing on the other side. And that's that. Okay, so now you see I have two holes right there. I have two holes right there. Now this is the easy part. There's a little residual plastic there left over from the drilling process. So if you have that kind of a problem, basically what I do is I just push it back through there. So it's kind of sealing the hole. And then I'll take the drill and push it through the hole. At, push it through the hole before you turn the drill on. Otherwise, you'll make a new hole and you don't want to do that. So there it is. It's a cleaned out hole. Plumbing tricks right there. Yes, I have plumbing experience. I was never a certified plumber. But I was a person who remodeled houses, so had to learn everything. All right, here goes this. Is it going to fit? I might need to make the hole just slightly bigger. Because the threading is actually... The threading on this is a little bit bigger than what my hole is. So, like I said, I don't believe I have a bigger drill bit. And it's okay to make the hole a little bit bigger than this because you actually need a little more space. I mean, you actually have the rubber grommet, so making the hole a little bit bigger than this is okay. So what I have to do now to make the hole bigger is snap the lid back on, put this back on top, dump the plastic out of there. 
get it right where it should be and line up the holes. I'm seeing one hole, but not the other. How'd that happen? There they are. So getting these holes lined up for me is the most difficult part of the whole procedure, the whole process. And it looks like my holes got a little off center. Maybe I should have taken some tape and put them on there. But hey, I needed to make the holes a little bigger anyway. So back to the milling bit. Milling bit. And this bit is a little bit wider. I uh, probably can't see it, but that's okay. Basically, I'm, I'm drilling down and I'm, I'm rotating the drill as I do it to widen the hole. Now, I do want to say that I'm making this process by doing it this way harder than it has to be if I just got a bigger drill bit. This would be a lot easier. I wouldn't have to keep, you know, messing with this and I'd probably already be done. But because not everybody has the right tools, improv improvising is a good thing to be able to do and to know how to do. As you can see, I have extra holes. They're not, you know, perfectly circular anymore, but that's why you have the rubber washers. Now, assuming this goes through the hole, still a pretty tight fit. You can see that. That's a good thing. We want it to be a tight fit. So that is simply going to go on like that. The water is going to basically go down the hole into the filter. And yeah, these are gravity fed filters. So it takes, uh, you know, quite a while for all the water to filter through there. So, you know, you got to really expect to do this a day in advance. If you plan on having a five gallon bucket full of water, you want to fill it up the night before you go to bed, fill it up the next morning. Just keep it full is my goal here. I don't intend on not having the top bucket full. I mean, we'll have to get on the kids about doing that. Like I said, you do have to soak these filters. You have to soak them for, I don't remember exactly how long. I'll read the instructions here in a minute. But this is the build process. And I wanted to get that out of the way because I can soak the filters while they're screwed onto this thing without any issue there. So I do have extra washers. I'm considering putting one on the bottom and on the top. But I really don't think it's necessary because if you can see that, these filters actually butt up against the, the lid fairly well. So as long as I get it on there tight enough, it shouldn't be a problem. So now we just put this on here. And I am just holding the lid. And this is just a rubber washer here. There are rubber. Uh, so yeah, let's line this up. That's going to be the difficult part. And I am going to have to take this all apart again just to clean the buckets and things like that. Now, I believe I'm actually pushing the filters back through by trying to set it that way. So the easier way to do this is going to be like this. Get both of your holes lined up. Make sure everything's in there properly. having trouble getting this one down so I'm thinking maybe the hole in the bucket might need to be just slightly wider but as you can see they are in there what I'm going to do is try to force the hole where it needs to be with the wing nut that might not work because I don't see that I have enough room and those rubber washers are not the right ones. I think I had smaller ones. Yeah, that one's. Okay, what I'm currently thinking now is I'm doing that wrong again. So I think I actually should put the rubber washer here so it has a flat surface. 
and then it'll butt up against the thing that way. Yeah, so what I, I've changed my, my mind here yet again. Hopefully you're still seeing what I'm doing because I keep forgetting where the camera is. But yeah, see, I put the rubber washer on it. Now I'm going to feed it through the bucket or the hole in the lid. I'm going to go ahead and remove this one just to make this a little easier. And it just seems like it's not going into the bucket very well. Yeah, so I'm going to have to mill out the hole a little more. Like I said, I'm making this more complicated than it needed to be. But the bucket holes are just a little bit too small. Trial and error. This is trial and error. I did watch a couple videos on how to do this. I watched uh, Homestead Off has a good video on how to do this. Alaska Prepper has a good video on how to do this. Probably better than this video, to be quite honest with you. There we go. A little bit of hitting it, and it went right on. Now, I do have the rubber washer still under this filter, like I said. Where did I put that other filter? Now I'm missing filter, so I'm sitting on it. That's awesome. There's the other rubber washer. And there we go. Yep, perfect. There it is. There's my filters on my lid in my top bucket. Everything is coming together now, finally. So basically, you'll set this down there, snap it on. And I see what had happened is my, my bucket on top is a little off-centered. So I didn't get it centered. My wife will not be happy. It must have moved when I was drilling one of the holes, and I didn't realize it. But that's okay. It still will work. Now we just screw on the wing nut in here. You can get a little rubber grommet if you'd like. I would recommend doing so if you notice any seepage or leaking. And there it is. That is a Berkey build. Oh, there is that one other thing I forgot to mention. Or I didn't forget to mention, but I forgot to do. I do need to drill another hole in the side. Because I'm not going to drill through the gamma lid. That would just be a waste of a gamma lid. But what I will do... Wow, that's an interesting view. What I will do is I'm going to take a, just a smaller drill bit and punch a little hole right through here. That should get it enough air. Hopefully. If not, I may end up making a bigger hole. But I'm just going to take... This says it's a 5 16th drill bit. I think that would be sufficient. And I'm just going to punch a hole right through the lip right here on the side. And that's going to be my air hole. Now I am going to take a little screen or something and just glue it over the top of that hole just to keep the cat hair out mostly. The less debris you have in your water when you're running your water filter, the longer your water filter will last. Right. Where did I put that hole? Ah, there it is. Little hole I put in the side. I have a little piece of screen from an old window. This is a metal screen. And I was going to put some glue on it, but I just figured it would be a little bit easier. So I got some, uh, this is not electrical tape. This is actually Gorilla tape. I keep it in my uh, bug out bag because I always need tape. and. I always have my bug out bag, so probably need one piece of tape for each side. So let's see if I can take that in half. I'm bad at tearing tape. Ah, I get it. That's amazing. So Gorilla Tape to screen over the hole just to keep any debris, sediment out, any cat hair mostly. And... Yeah, let air in so that the air intake can let the gravity filter do its job. All right. 
that, my friends, has been a Berkey water filter build. Now, yeah, it could have been easier. It could have because I just didn't have the right size drill bits or any extra hands. But if you have a, a second person to keep it from, like I said, being uneven, if you can see that, well, probably not. Uh, maybe. If you can see that, it's not even. But it's locked together due to the due to the filters being wing nutted in there. There is no water in it currently. And like I said, I do have to pop it all apart and soak it, which I will do soak and rinse in just a few minutes. But there's no need to do that on the video because you understand the purpose and the meaning of that. But like I said, this was more complicated than it needed to be. Never done it before. And this, I didn't practice. I didn't read any instructions. I watched a couple of YouTube videos and then I did it. So yeah, thanks to uh, Homestead Oss for their video on this. Thanks to Alaska Prepper for his video on this. And hey, if you want to check them out, I recommend doing that also. But this has been James with Grim Survival. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. Give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed the video because I like thumbs up. And I'll see you next time.